By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And also welcome at the Camel Trophy. We are here in Arnhem. This is round number one. And this is an old school gentleman's tournament. What does that mean, a gentleman's tournament? It means that we're not playing with Mind Twist and we're not playing with Library of Alexandria. So those are two cards you're not going to see in these tournament reports. We call that the gentleman's rules. The other rules that we have is we're playing according to the Swedish rule set. That means no mana burn and no fallen empires and only one strip mine. Now, if you want to know more about the ins and outs of the rule sets, please check out the description below for more information also about the reprint policy. For this tournament, you're allowed to play with a lot of reprints. For example, your Chronicle cards and revised cards, it's all good at this tournament. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of the decks of Thijs and Peter. Those are the two players here in round one. Um, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip this section. I know some people enjoy going straight to the games themselves. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the action. And as for now, I'm going to continue with the deck text. I'm starting with the deck of Thijs. He's playing an ATOG deck. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of dice. So this is an ATOG deck, right? I mean, there are four ATOGs in here. And I love this deck because it's different. It's not the kind of decks that I usually see when people are playing ATOG. First off, it's not playing the blue power splash, which is actually kind of nice to see. Um, and secondly, it's also playing a lot of cards that you usually don't see being played next to an ATOG. For example, we've got two... Uh, Four eyes here in the deck, the four four giants, four four tramplers here, one written four to cast. And we also have a Sheevan Dragon in the deck. We only have one Triskelion. Usually people play with four Triskelions, especially when they also play with Mana Volts in their Atok deck. So there are some different choices being made. At the same time, we also see some, you know, some some common choices which make a lot of sense in Atok. For example, we see the Vice, we see the Ankh, we see the Mana Volt, we see the Suchis, which is quite good in... Uh, in Swedish, I remember no mana burn. We see the Mishra's Factories, which of course are quite good together with Atok. There is, uh, there are also a lot of one-offs in this deck, which I think is pretty cool. And a lot of like Silver Bullet type of cards like Terror, uh, Balance, City in a Bottle, of course, but also One Armageddon. And I think all these single cards get a lot better uh, because of that uh, Black Splash of Dice, because that means he's got access to Demonic Tutor. So Demonic Tutor gives him twice the chance to, for example, draw in a city in a bottle when he really needs it. There are always going to be decks that you play against, like Arabian Aggro, where you're like, oh, I really need that city in a bottle. And then the Demonic Tutor gives you an extra chance to find that card in those matchups. So Demonic Tutor, I'm a big fan of that card when you're playing with a lot of one-offs. It makes your silver bullets a lot better. Now, another card that I really like in here, and it's a card you actually don't see being played that often next to Atok, is Tetravis. Tetravis is a, a six-mana... 1-1 one, one flyer, but it comes in with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters, just like the Triskelion, so it's a 4-4 four, four flyer. And in your upkeep, you can take the plus 1 plus 1 counters off to make a little 1-1 one, one flyers. And that means that under the right circumstances, one single Tetravis could mean 4 artifact creatures, which means plus 8 plus 8 to your ATOC at the right time. Like, that is ridiculous value. The problem, of course, of this card is it's 6 to cast, it's slow, you gotta wait a whole turn before you can take stuff off. They're 1-1 one, one flyers, they're vulnerable. Usually when you cast it, your opponent is going to like disenchant it, shatter it, whatever. But if you manage to keep it around long enough that you can take the counters off and swing with it and have an ATOC on the board, I know there are a lot of ifs, but if you can make it happen, it is a big swing. You know, it's it's potential plus eight, plus eight for your ATOC, which can be huge, you know, especially when you're playing a deck like this. You already have vices for quick damage, four bolts for quick damage. That can really work. Now, um, when we're looking at the sideboard, there is something interesting. At least I find it interesting. Those are the three Sarah Angels. And I'm wondering what the idea is with the Sarahs. Or there may be matchups where you're going to take out your Suchis, put the Sarahs in. Are there going to be matchups where maybe you take out your Atox because your opponent is expecting the Atox, then you put in the Suchis, so you kind of leave the Atox plan? Um, I'm honestly curious. So please, guys, let me know in the comments below when you watch this video, what is your plan with the Sarahs? Because I'm intrigued, you know, and I think Sarah Angels could work, of course, in a deck that also plays Mana Volts, because that means that you can potentially uh, get your Sarah Angel out at turn two, maybe with some more ramp, even turn one. We also see in the sideboard, by the way, an extra Armageddon. So you could also kind of go more on the Armageddon plan, again, depending on what kind of opponent you're playing against. 
Now this is the deck of Thais. Now let's take a look at the deck of Peter. He's playing blue green enchantress. And here we see the deck of Peter. So this is for Jern Enchantress, right? Combined with mainly blue, we also see a little bit of red. And even in the sideboard, we see some white. So that's quite interesting. Let's first kind of focus on what he wants to do here. So for Jern Enchantress, two green and one to cast for an O2. Beautiful creature, beautiful art. Uh, but it also has a useful ability because when you cast an enchantment, you get to draw a card, which is quite nice. So if you play, for example, your Sylvan Library, you get to draw a card. Talking about Sylvan Library, it's a card that goes together quite well with your Enchantress because it allows you to look at the top three cards, put them in order. So that means that you're going to put an enchantment on top, draw the enchantment, play the enchantment, draw another card. And the more cards you draw, of course, the better the Sylvan gets because then next turn, you probably get to see three completely new cards. Again, you're going to put those enchantments at the top and kind of create your own drawing engine. Now, this card uh, goes together quite well with another enchantment here, Dark Heart of the Wood. Dark Heart of the Wood, one green and one black, a card from the dark. If you sacrifice a forest, you gain three life. Now, this is really a control deck, right? You want to get your card draw engine going. You know, you want to draw into your burn spells. You want to start copying your Fiduran Enchantress. You want to do all these shenanigans. That means you need time. Life gain equals time, right? So if Peter can find his Dark Heart of the Wood quite early in the game in combination with an Enchantress, he can start sacking forests, drawing cards, gain some life, you know, and I think then he's in a good position. If he cannot, you know, then it's going to get difficult for him. What I also like in this deck is that he is playing Channel Fireball, but what he can also do is he can use his channel to just gain a lot of, just hurt himself basically, lose a lot of life. Why would you want to do that? Because he's also playing Mirror Universe. So let's say he's in a situation where he's got a Brain Geyser and a channel. He could kind of draw a lot of cards, hurt himself a lot, and then next turn use his Mirror Universe and change the life totals. Like that would be an ideal scenario for him. That would be really funny if you could pull that off. Um, and then in the sideboard, which is quite interesting, he is playing with some white card so he's playing circle of protection red which of course is a problem for him like this deck if it has to deal with an earthquake that's going to be disastrous and of course an aggressive red deck like a lot of burn that's going to be quite hard for Peter to uh, to handle with he really wants to go that control route so I get it that he put a circle of protection red there and also a circle of protection black against uh, I guess against the uh, the aggro black decks as well and because you've got access to city of brass and you've got access to four birds of paradise there could be a scenario where you're able to kind of, you know, get white mana and play these cards because they only have white, one white in their casting cost anyway. So, you know, overall, I think Peter's deck is um, it's really funny. It's looking good. It's looking okay. And uh, I, I, I always look forward to seeing Enchantress because you don't see it that often. Okay, and now that that is out of the way, we've talked about all the decks. Let's go to round one of the Camel Trophy. Game number one of match number one of round number one at the Camel Trophy in Arnhem. We have Thijs on the left. He's on the play here, starting with a Plateau into a Black Vice. He's playing an Atog deck. And he's passing the turn to Peter, who apparently took a Mulligan to six, because he's only taking two damage here. He's playing for Jurn Enchantress with green and a lot of blue. Let's see what he can do. Starting here with a Sylvan Library. We have a little bit of glare, unfortunately, but that's a Sylvan. And okay, he didn't take a mole. He's correcting uh, his life total here on 17. There we see a mana vault and a pass. So no second land drop here by Thijs. And of course, Peter here having the uh, possibility to look at the top three cards, put them in order and draw an extra card if he wants to. He can do that twice, but he has to pay four life for each extra card drawn that way. Here we see the Fajuran Enchantress. So now you've got Sylvan Library and Enchantress online. This is a really good combination because you can use your Sylvan to find the enchantments and of course for each enchantment that you cast you get to draw a card because of the Fajuran Enchantress. Let's see if there will be a bolt here on the Enchantress. No, there is a Suchi instead a 4-4. And uh, now he's going to look at the top three cards, can put them in order. I guess the Fast Bond is going to be on top there because it's going to allow him to draw some cards. He's also playing with some black by the way for Dark Heart of the Woods. There we see a Fast Bond so it's going to draw an extra card. He's played that maze to take care of the Suchi. And Thijs here taking a damage from his Mana Vault. There's another Plateau. I think for Thijs it's just so important to get rid of that Enchantress. That's the whole engine of Peter. If he can destroy the Enchantress, you know, he has a chance. So this is quite good Ankh of Mishra here. That means for each land you play, you take two points of damage. And look at that Fast Bond on the table of Peter. Peter, of course, wanting to 
play extra lands out, but it's going to be very costly now for him. He's going to play a land, take two damage from the Ankh, and he can play an extra one because of the fast bomb, but that means even more damage. There we see a Dark Heart of the Wood. Has to take a damage for that as well, I believe, so he should be on 13, or perhaps I missed something. Did get to draw a card, of course, because of that Enchantress and passes the turn. And Ty's taking extra damage from his own Vault. I'm surprised I'm not seeing any bolts here from Thais. It simply means he doesn't have them in hand, of course. An Atok would also be quite nice. He could then attack with the Atok and with the Suchi, playing another Ankh instead, passing the turn. That means playing out of land is going to set you back four points of damage. I mean, that's pretty rough. Tapping four here, so it takes the damage from his own City of Brass, dropping to 13. Oh, Control Magic. This is really good, this Control Magic. Going to get to draw a card for it as well. I mean, Fajuran Enchantress and Sylvan together online is, is so good. And I wonder if Thais now has a Disenchant. He really needs it right now. It's going to set back another life. No Disenchant, though. It is a good blocker, the Atok. The problem here, of course, for Thais is that Peter can just attack with the Suchi wait uh, for whatever Pater wants to do, and if the block isn't in his favor, he simply uses his Maze of If and takes his Sushi out of combat. Another card here chosen. Looks like to be a land. I thought it was a Taiga. Attacking here with the Sushi. We see, also see a Birds of Paradise there in hand for Pater, which is nice, because you can kind of play around the, uh, the Ankh of Mishras. So there's the attack. Ty's really in the tank here. Like, for example, if he sacks some artifacts, he's just going to use his mace and take it out of combat. So he's just going to take the damage, drop him to 13. There's a double Birds of Paradise here for Peter. I guess he ran out of enchantments in hand. Playing something else as well. Ooh, a Dance of Many. So Dance of Many is a card from the Dark 2 Blue for this enchantment, and you can make a uh, Dance of Many token. That is a copy of a creature of your choice. So it looks like he's going to copy the Suchi. You do have to pay two blue during your upkeep, though, to keep it around. So that means one damage each turn now for Pater because he has to then tap that City of Brass for blue mana. And there we see, by the way, that Thais has sacked his own mana vault to the Atok, which makes sense. You don't want to take any more damage. He's on 13. I mean, it's looking pretty rough here for... Uh, for Thais, to be honest, next turn, Peter can attack with both Suchis. The Dance of Many clone, and of course, the Suchi he stole from, uh, from Thais. And Thais only has that one Atok. So he's really in the tank here. He's on 13 life. This is game number one, passing the turn here. And of course, he's going to use his Birds of Paradise to pay for the blue mana. Of course he does. I forgot about those birds. Unfortunately, the life total is now out of sight here. I'll try to keep you up to date, though. It's going to draw just one card again. It looks like another Fajuran Enchantress. It's going to attack here with both 4-4s. Four if Thais takes the damage, he's going to drop to 5. I mean, he doesn't really have a good option, though. Like, if he blocks, like I said, Pater's just going to use the Mace in response to any artifacts that he sacks. He can, of course, use his Atok as a chump blocker as well. Then again, maybe Thais also wants to get rid of the Ankh of Mishras because at a certain point, I'm sure he wants to play out some more lands. Only two lands now for him. He's really in the tank here, trying to think of what to do in this, uh, in this situation. I mean, the thing with these Fujur and Enchantress's decks, especially when you've got the, um, the Silva next to it, is, is basically you need... Uh, that, that bolt, right? You just need to take care of that drawing engine of your opponent. And if you can't, then you know you're going to get into trouble. And that's exactly what's happening right now. You can see the tapping of the fingers. It's like a catch-22 scenario here for Thais. No really good options for him. Of course, we don't know what he's got in hand, though. So maybe there are some tricks in his hand that he can use. It does look like he wants to tap his plateaus. 
I mean, a disenchant on, on the control magic would be great, right? It gives him a creature, takes a creature away from uh, Peter. But if he had the disenchant, he would have played it already, right? Is he going to play double bolt here, perhaps? One bolt, two bolt, double bolt on the Suchi. Interesting. Another line of play could have been block with the Atok. You know, secure to Angst, for example. And then, of course, he would use his uh, mace to take it out. And then you could still bolt it or sack one of the Angst, deal three points of damage or just one point of damage with the Atok. Let the Atok die. The, the damage stays on the creature until the end of turn. So before the end ends, play a bolt on the Suchi. But this is a problem here for Tais. I mean, double Vajuran Enchantress against you, that 4-4 still, the Dance of Many copy. Only two lands have pl in play for him, double Ankh of Mishra. He's on 9, it's going to be really rough for him. And for every enchantment that Peter now plays out, he gets to draw 2 cards, which is huge. There's a Disenchant. Okay, now he's kind of cleaning the table. I guess he just uh, top-decked the Disenchant. That's very unfortunate here for Tais. If he would have had that disenchant one turn before, he could have disenchanted the control magic and he would have he would have had a Suchi right now. So very unfortunate for him. And of course, the reason that he double bolted his own Suchi and not the dance of many of Peter is because of, of course, that two blue upkeep cost that then Peter has to pay every turn. I mean, it's... It's a rough decision, right? You can say, okay, I'm going to destroy the dance of many because if I draw into that disenchant, I get my creature back. On the other hand, you know, the two blue is kind of holding Peter back in, in a way, I guess. So you want to to make that happen as well. Oh, look at this. He's attacking the mana base of Peter here. Bolting two birds. Bolt the bird. So he's completely ignoring the Enchantress. I guess what he's doing is he's thinking, you know, I've got the vice. He doesn't want to draw that many cards anyway. But look at this, though. We see a power sink. Saving, uh, it seems, the last Birds of Paradise. And that makes a difference. So he's got five cards in hand now. And Thijs is on nine. I believe Pater's on 13? Oh, less. It's hard to see his life total now. He is taking, of course, four points of damage for that land that he just played out. That's huge. Now he's taking another point for the City of Brass. Ooh, there's a Mirror Universe. I wish we could see the life total here of Peter. It's two dice. That's what I know now, right? So it's less than 10 for sure. And he's playing the Mirror Universe, so I guess it's less than nine. One of the things that Thais could do right now is play out a land so that he goes to five. Yeah, of course, Peter does have that Dark Heart of the Woods. So remember, Dark Heart of the Woods, Sack of Forest, gain three life. He's got three forests there. Looks like he's not going to trade life totals. He could draw an extra card here, take four damage. He could play a land out, take four damage. There are lots of ways here for, for Peter to deal damage to himself, only making the Mirror Universe better. But the same thing goes for, for Thais, of course. He can just play out a land, take some damage. So this is a very, like, very interesting game. There's the City of Brass. Gonna take even more damage. His life is on three right now. Okay, now we know his life total again. So I guess he's gonna trade. He's got Fireball in hand. So he's gonna trade lives next turn and kill Tice. So this is basically Tice's last turn. If he has a land, I would definitely play it out now. Just go to five. At least that's something. Also, unfortunately for Tice, he's already played out all his Lightning Bolts. I mean, if he would have played out a land, go to five, and if he would have then still had the double bolt, and then after Peter changes life totals, or just a bolt now on the life, by the way, because he's on three, he's boltable, but all the four bolts are in the bin here of Thais. He's very unlucky. I feel that this is one of those games, and I've had them before, um, you know, where Thais is constantly doing something, and then he top decks a card, where you're like, oh, if I would have known that would have been on the top of my library, I would have made a completely different decision. You know, I feel the same thing with the with the double bolts on the Birds of Paradise. Look at this. 
sacking both angs here. And there's the change with the mirror universe. So Peter goes up to nine. Yeah, and I guess we got a fireball. There's the fireball, and that is game uh, number one. Unless, of course, nope, nothing here. No, no sword to plowshares or anything from Thijs. This was game number one, and a very interesting game indeed. Both of these players are going to shuffle up sideboard, and we'll catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game number two, here we go. We've got Thijs on the play after losing game one, and again, an opener with Vice. That's what his deck wants to do. And we see Peter dropping to 17. Seven in hand, of course, going to draw card number eight. Can he ramp up? There's a Sylvan. If he can find a green source and a Mox, he can play out that Sylvan. There is a Bayou into a Birds of Paradise. Okay, so he is ramping up. That means six cards in hand for Peter. So two more damage next turn from the Vice. There is a Mountain. Are we going to see a Bolt the Bird here by Tess? Or is he just going to attack or play an Atok? He actually has a lot of options in his deck when he's got two mana. Could even play an Ankh of Mishra as well. And it looks like he's got some options because he is really considering what he wants to do. Does he want to go uber aggro here? Attack with the 2-2 Factory Worker. Look at that. There's a Mox Pearl attacking for two. So Pater's going to drop to 15 and pass turn. So he's going to keep that red open. There's no Bolt in hand, I guess. He's going to tap two. And I, I believe that Pedro should have taken some damage here, if I'm not mistaken, from the Vice. Playing out here a Sol Ring, and again that Sylvan Library. That is really good for him. We saw that, of course, in Game 1. That works so well when you've got Sylvan and Vajurin Enchantress together on the board. Of course, I'm not sure if he has a Vajurin in hand. There is a Chaos Orb. Could flip here on the Sylvan. Yeah, I think that's a good decision, because... Sylvan can be so good. Oh no, he misses the flip completely. Oh man, it looked like he kind of rushed through that flip. And that's the thing with Chaos Orb, you know. It's it's not a guaranteed hit. You got you to take your time for these things. And I think that Pater right now is out of Vice Reach. But like I said, I believe, but maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, now he takes the damage. I believe next uh, last turn he forgot to take the damage. Because he took three from the Vice, then two from the Factory. He was on 15. He stayed on 15. I think he should have dropped there to 13. But these things happen, of course. There is a Tropical Island. What can he do here? There's a Dark Heart of the Wood. So Dark Heart of the Wood, we saw that in Game 1, 2. Enchantment from the Dark. Sack of Forest, gain 3 life. And that's so good against these aggressive decks, right? Because aggro decks hate life gain. I was playing a very aggressive deck myself at this tournament, and you just hate it. Like, you hate cards like Lifelink, Dark Heart of the Wood. And with Lifelink, I mean Spirit Link, by the way. Anyway, you don't like those cards. Because your plan is just to, to deal damage every turn, and it's like a race. Disenchant here on Dark Heart of the Wood it kind of shows how important that enchantment is. You know, he's choosing Dark Heart of the Wood over the Sylvan Library here. There we see a channel in hand here for Peter. So he is playing Channel Fireball in this deck. Of course, his life total now too low. That's another neat little trick in his deck. He can use, of course, his Force, sack them to the Dark Heart of the Wood, gain some life, make sure he's above the life total of his opponent when he has a Channel Fireball in hand. And he's just passing the turn here. He looks like he's got a Dance of Many, but no targets. And this is not too bad for Thijs. I mean, if he can just, you know, play out some creatures, put some pressure on it, I guess attack here with the factory worker is quite nice as well. He's going to put him on 12. There's an Atok. Okay, now, now we're cooking. Now we're doing something. Okay. Are we going to see a counterspell by Peter? No, there is a Maze of If, though. So he can just play the Maze to take the pressure off a little bit. So there's the maze. And right now, of course, the Sylvan is no longer that good because you've already looked at the top three cards earlier without drawing an extra card. So that basically means that every single time now, you just get to see one new card as you would normally would as well when you're just drawing. So the Sylvan has kind of lost some value here. Sending back here at the factory. And it looks like he's just going to take the damage. And now the question is, is Thijs going to sack some artifacts to the Atok? 
Looks like he's not, which I completely understand. Putting Pater here on 11. I think I see a recall there in hand of Pater. Could use a recall to get the dark card back. I mean, it's not really something you want to do right now, but it could be an option later in the game if your life total keeps dwindling. So looking at his hand, the only card he could really identify in his hand so far is that Dance of Many. Looks like he's getting the recall or not. We just have to wait and see. Tapping two here. One blue and two colorless. Yep, there's the recall. Getting back the Dark Heart. So the Dark Heart is so important for him, right? I also see a Control Magic, by the way, in the hand of Peter. Could use Control Magic on Atok. But no rush for him, of course. Playing Dark Heart of the Wood past turn. There's the untapped by Tai, so he's still on 20. There's a Badlands. I believe he's playing a Terror and a Demonic Tutor. Those are the only two black cards in his deck. So there's an attack sending back the Factory Worker. Taking a damage, it seems, dropping to 10. And there's a pass turn. So I was actually, when I looked at the lists, I was expecting more aggression from Thijs. He's more playing his Atog deck, more in a controlish fashion. Which he's also forced to a little bit because of the maze and of course that life gain shenanigans of Peter. Gonna get two cards again. Or one card, I should say, putting two back again. That's what I mean. Ooh, there's a fireball. I believe he's got channel fireball in hand, but he doesn't have a yeah, he does have a red source because of the uh Birds of Paradise. The question now is for Peter, can he sack enough Lance through his dark card to gain enough life? There's an Ank of Mishra. Ooh, that is annoying for Peter. Ank of Mishra means every time you play a land, you take two points of damage. Animating again and just doing the same thing. It seems to work quite well here for Thijs. Means one more point of damage. Going to put him on nine. Ooh, look at this. He's going to sack the vice. Going to put him on seven. And passing the turn. I would have been tempted here to also sack the Mox Pearl. But again, of course, I don't know what's in the hand here of Thijs. And also, I don't really know if, if it matters that much. If you would put Peter on uh, on 7 or 5, if that really matters. So he's got Channel Fireball in hand, right? We know that. Or actually, he can choose the channel, I guess, from the top of his deck. The question is, can he make that work? He only has two forests to sack, the Tropical Island and the Bayou, which will net him 6 life. So I don't think it's going to work for him right now. He's going to play out another land, going to drop to 5. I guess I would just play Control Magic here on the Atog, to be honest. Not quite sure what the other options are for him. And he's passing the turn. Interesting. He's being very patient with this Control Magic, and maybe he should be. And Thijs taking some damage from his own Ankh, dropping to thirteen, uh, to 18, sorry, because he played out that plateau. Oh, <laughs> Tapping the Pearl, animating the factory. He's going to do what he's been doing all the time. And now he could actually sack some artifacts and put Peter in a difficult spot. He's forcing Peter to kind of then sack some force. I wonder if he's going to do that. He could sack the Ankh and the Pearl to deal five points of damage. I guess you don't want to sack the Ankh with the dark card on the table. Could consider sacking the Pearl. Doesn't do it though, passing the turn. Because if he would have sacked the Pearl, he can put Pater on two, meaning Pater cannot play out a land unless he first sacks a forest, right? Because each land that he plays out is going to cost him two life because of the Ankh. So those are, you know, considerations that you can make. Is that an ancestral recall there in hand, I believe? For Peter. And that Ancestral is, of course, a super good card, but it's even better when you also have Sylvan Library because that means next turn you get to see a whole new uh, top of your deck. The, the all three cards are new with the Sylvan that you can look at. And then there's a pretty big chance you're going to find Enchantress there and that you can get your 
your whole card drawing engine going. If Dice now has a vice in hand, that would be brilliant for him, right? Because Peter's not kind of filling his hand because the vice is off the table. It's like, I'm safe. But what if Dice is withholding a vice, has a vice in hand? That would be a very smart strategy and could be a, a game changer. Peter passing the turn. I mean, this is this is looking quite good for Tice. Does he have a vice here? That would be so good for him. I believe there are seven cards in hand by Peter. He, that means three damage. He would go to one. He would be forced to start sacking his forests. Gonna tap the pearl again, animating the factory. And just attack. Sending back again the factory. He's gonna take a damage. Is he gonna sack some stuff here? I would be so tempted to sack that pearl, but again, I don't know what's in the hand of Dice, of course. Just dealing one point of damage, gonna put him on three. Does Dice have, for example, a bolt here to force Peter to sack some forests? There's a Suchi. Playing out the Suchi, I think he has to tap another land for that, to be honest. Suchi is four. Oh, of course, he untapped the Mistress Factor of the Maze. Yeah, so he's got four mana. Yeah. Okay, so Suchi on board, four, four. There's a control magic. Oh, and this is the moment that uh, Peter had been waiting for. So his patience is paying off. So he's stealing the Suchi in response. Dice is, of course, sacking it to the Atok. There we see another tap of four. Or actually, that's probably the four mana for the control magic. I mean, he's on three. Is he now forced to, for example, you know, sack a forest or jump with the birds next turn? What else can he do? I mean, he's got a full grip of cards. Looks like he's gonna tap three, he's gonna untap quickly though. Perhaps he was considering playing out a Enchantress and then realized, well, if I do that, I gotta jump with my Enchantress straight away. I don't wanna do that. So passing the turn. I mean, things are looking really good for Dice still. Animating, attacking. The big problem, of course, is that Dark Heart of the Wood. So he can put Patron two here. Two life, that is. He could also sack, oh, look at that, he's sacking the factory. That's a bit of a surprise. So now he's got a sack of forest to stay on three. That is a surprise. I really wonder what his mana base looks like, because I would be tempted to sack that mox instead. And just passing the turn here. I mean, I would love to see the hand of dice right now. I just want to know... You know, what his options are. I mean, in the hand here of Peter, we see an island, a Wheel of Fortune. I think there's still a Dance of Many in there. Playing a forest. That means he's on one. Yeah, because of the Ankh of Mishra. Oh, man. It's so... This, I mean, Thais is so close, yet he's so far because of the Dark Heart of the Wood. If he can find a disenchant for the Dark Heart... Is he going to play a bolt here? Bolt on the life total of Peter, basically destroying a forest with a bolt. And now, of course, because he sacked the factory to the Atok, he doesn't have any pressure anymore. So I'm kind of expecting him to play out another creature. The nice thing of factory, of course, is that you cannot play a control magic on it. You cannot play a dance of many on it. So in many ways, it's a great creature to have against this deck of Peter. So that is why I was a little bit surprised that he sacked that to the Atok instead of, for example, the Mox Pearl. But we'll, we'll have to see and wait. Passing the turn again. I mean, Peter is almost dead, but at the same time, so far away. Peter can no longer play out any lands because he's on one. He's got a sack of forest first before he can play out another land. There's another Atok. This is really good news for Tice. Next turn, 
he can potentially finish it or at least force Bates to jump with the birds or, of course, to sack some forests. There's a tap for five. What is he going to play out here? Fireball. Wow, fire in the hole. Trying to take out both Atox and now Tice is in a difficult position. He can choose to, of course, sack some artifacts to save his Atox, but I mean, you don't want to sack your Ankh of Mishra because then Pather can start playing out forests again, gain life, get back in the game. One of the things he could do is, of course, sack that Mox Pearl to keep one of his Atox alive. Not doing it though. So losing both of the Atox here. Untapping, drawing a card, playing a land for turn, gonna drop to 16. Can he put some more pressure on? If he has a second creature, that would be great for him. Because then next turn he can attack with the creature and with the factory, tapping four. Are we going to see another Suchi? There's a Suchi hitting the board, and now he kind of has to keep his fingers crossed and hope that Pater doesn't have another control magic. Because he doesn't have any Atox anymore to sack the Suchi to in response to control magic. I mean, if Pater now has a control magic, he's going to take that creature. And then he can play Dance of Many. Oh, there we go. That is painful. Stealing the Suchi. I mean, that Suchi just looks like a perfect target. There we get the Dance of Many, copying the Suchi. And now the tables have turned. Two 4-4 four, four creatures on the side of Pater. So next turn, he can swing in for eight. And remember, Pater is still on one. There's a bolt. He's got a second out of forest, second tropical island to stay alive. If Dice can find another direct damage spell, there's a wheel of fortune. That is really good for him. He's played out two bolts so far. Can he find bolt number three and bolt number four? Or a vice. A vice would be quite good as well. Maybe even better. So both players drawing a fresh seven. There's a Batlands played by Thais. Thais going to drop to 14. Does he have that vice? I mean, a bolt would be good too. That would be forcing Pater to kind of sack his bayou. He's playing three vice main. I'm sure he's kept them in because he was on the play. Tapping a Batlands. Mana Volt though, no vice. For a moment I thought it was going to be a vice. Tapping the Volt. Playing Ank of Mishra, one mana floating. Tapping another one. There's Atok number three hitting the board. Quite nice of course with the Volt. But again, Pater has what we saw in uh, game one too, that Maze of If, which is so good in defense. There's another control magic here. He can get the control. Steal the Atok, swing in for eight. But he doesn't have double blue though, he cannot play out. Oh, now he's got double blue with the Mox Sapphire. That's a perfect draw for him. So he could use Mox Sapphire, Birds of Paradise for double blue and Soul Ring to attack, but it looks like he's not. He's first gonna attack. Makes sense, just see what your opponent's gonna do. No hurry. There's a block on the existing Suchi feeding the Mana Vault and the Mox Pearl. And then we see that trick of Pater taking it out of combat. That means 4 damage here for Tais, going to drop to 10. Oh man, this must be so tough for Tais. He's like so close to winning and yet so far away. And I think Tais has to take the damage here. So he drops to 10. Pater still on one. Tapping two. Play out two more Birds of Paradise. And those birds are really good because they're helping Pater get like free mana without taking the damage from the Ankh of Mishra. So they're very vital to his game plan. But unfortunately, I will probably 
I mean, he now has four birds of paradise right on the board. That's kind of that's kind of silly. I, I don't see that often. Usually, when you play a bird, it's gone in a sec. But in this game, the birds definitely stick. Oh, this is this is so tough here for for Tice. One of the things he can do, of course, is attack with both his creatures, animate the factory, attack with both, and then Peter's probably just gonna block one on the Suchi and chump the other. That's at least what I would do. So Dice really, really into tank here. Tapping four. What are we going to get? Another Suchi, perhaps. He is playing with a full playset of Suchis. Peter stole one, and one's already in the graveyard, but he's got enough left. Okay, there's the uh, two-headed giant, the four eyes. Big fan of this card. You don't see it often. 4-4 four, four Trampler that can block two creatures. Would actually, That's actually relevant in this scenario, because what happens here is Peter attacks with both creatures, right? Dice is going to say, I'm going to block both on my giant. And then Peter can say, in response, I'm going to take one of the attackers out with my mace. Well, fine. You know, I can still deal damage to the other. So this is putting Peter in a difficult position. And there he goes, taking on his turn. Of course, paying for the Dance of Many double blue cost. He can also untap his uh, mace there. We saw another control magic. <laughs> So I guess that's the card that he's going to go for. He can untap the maze here. And that control magic is golden here. I think the control magics are going to win, win him the game here. Attacking, I'm a little bit surprised here. Because he could have played control magic on the giant. And then attacked with both. Instead choosing to attack first. Interesting option. I would definitely block both here with the uh, giant. You know, trade one of the creatures. Why not? And then also because your giant gets killed, a target gets off the board as well. Look at that, he's taking the damage though. There's a fireball and he's winning the game. That's it. And then he's also winning the match, by the way. This was game number two. Wow. And I really thought for the longest of times that um, that Tice could have won this, this game too. It was looking so good for him. Peter's been on one life for such a long time with this match, but those control magics and, of course, the dark heart of the wood are really the two cards that granted him here the, the, the victory. Maybe when I was talking about the, um, the giant, perhaps what can happen is the giant says I'm going to block both. But I guess before damage is dealt, then Peter has to make a decision, right? So I think a double block here by Tice would have been a possibility. Then again, you know, I've been wrong before with rules. So please let me know in the comments below how you feel about that situation. Would you double block and does it work the way I think it works? And that is that then Peter can use, of course, his mace to take one of his creatures out of combat, which is fine. But he has to do that before damage is dealt. When damage is already assigned... You know, can he then still use his mace? Can he say, okay, you're, you're putting four damage on this creature. I'm going to mace the creature out of combat. Perhaps it's possible before that damage then resolves. Maybe that's why Tice didn't block and decided just to take the eight points of damage. Anyway, it is what it is. Even if he would have done that, it would have been a really difficult, you know, situation here. I think also the Birds of Paradise were, were super good here uh, for... For Peter, you know, having a full playset on the board, meaning he could just continue playing cards. Anyway, this is uh, just round number one from the Camel Trophy. I'm going to be showing you episodes from this tournament all the way to the finals. So if you like what you see, please take a moment to subscribe and ring that bell. And if you're already a subscriber yet, fantastic. Thank you so much. Then take a moment to like, share, and comment on these videos. It's all for free, and it really helps the channel move forward. And then there's one other thing you, you can do, and that is become a member of the Timmy Talks Patreon page on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. You can check out how you can support the show financially as well. And it already starts with just $1. And one of the cool perks is your name will be in the end scroll at the end of every single video that I put on the channel, including this one. Let's take a look at my fantastic wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Sombra Kazik! <laughs> <laughs> 